Okay, what we have here is a 15-inch uh, MacBook Pro. This is the, uh, the typical uh, MacBook Pro 2007-2008. At that time, they were using uh, NVIDIA uh, graphical uh, processor units, uh, the GPU chip right here. And there's all kinds of things on YouTube and the Internet talking about how to remove the board and to uh, attempt to reflow the solder on those chips using uh, various baking uh, methods, some from the top, some from baking in uh, toaster ovens and regular ovens, uh, light bulbs, I've seen uh, hair dryers and every other method, uh, heat guns used to do that. But uh, what I wanted to go over is why does this happen? Um, when I opened up this MacBook Pro, I found that uh, once we got everything apart, that the, uh, the heat pipe, which is this... Uh, this device right here, um, which acts to move air through the uh, contact plates and remove heat from each of the chips, was not doing its job. And it was not doing its job because the louvers that are uh, located in front of the, uh, the twin fans, the push-pull fans that push and pull air through these heat pipes, were completely choked with dust. So, in effect, the, uh, the heat pipe was not functioning whatsoever, and all it took was uh, the MacBook Pro to probably be put into a case in, uh, in a mode where it was still operating, and for the case to be set down sharply, or for a sharp jar to occur, and one or, one or more of those uh, processor chips, uh, uh, the balls probably came unsoldered. So, the first thing we want to do when we take one of these things apart is make sure we've removed and blown out all of the dust and uh, we've used uh, some type of a uh, either a ultra duster a type of uh, spray dust we've gotten in there with q-tips we've been in there to clean uh, the unit completely and remove all of the dust there's no sense in putting the uh, the logic board back into the macbook pro because it's guaranteed to fail uh, right over again uh, in short order if we do not clean out that heat pipe. Uh, on the other hand, if someone had taken the time to do this job uh, a year or so into the MacBook Pro's life, or, or two years into the MacBook Pro's life, those chips likely would never have kind of come unsoldered. So um, it is a uh, kind of a, a poor engineering job in that uh, it requires uh, maintenance probably every couple of years, and uh, people are not used to doing that on something as delicate as a, uh, a laptop. But that's probably what it would take to keep these things running indefinitely. You'd have to clean this thing every couple of years because the dust is sucked in, and eventually it, it gets into places where it keeps the, uh, the heat from escaping. Uh, the other thing uh, we want to be concerned about is uh, ESD. And you'll notice I'm not using an ESD strap. Um, is ESD real with these? Um, it is. And I would suggest that when you do work on uh, motherboards, logic boards, and any electronics that has uh, integrated circuits, transistors, that you do use ESD precautions. Uh, one, one way to overcome that is to... Uh, make sure that you are operating in a high humidity environment. In this case, I'm in uh, my basement uh, workshop where the humidity is high enough that it's uh, extremely difficult to generate electrostatic uh, potentials that are damaging. Uh, circuit boards that have chips soldered to them are much less prone to ESD damage than a raw chip that is in, uh, in free space, in, in, in the air, where you can contact the pins easily. So it's not that I'm ignoring ESD. I'm taking a precaution by doing my work in a humid environment to reduce the chance of uh, ESD damage to the board. So the various uh, videos that are on YouTube show you how to remove the board, how to reflow the, the chips. One thing that uh, I learned is you don't want to bake the thing uh, with these small plastic clips still in place. You want to make sure you remove these clips or they could be deformed. That will make it a little more difficult to put the board in. Also, make sure you remove all of the pads and uh, pillows 
because they will melt and make a mess on that, that logic board. This is a very elegant design. The heat pipe is a beautiful design. It's just uh, there's no easy way to clean it without completely disassembling the computer, which is unfortunate. Uh, one thing that could have been done is they could have put an inlet filter on this assembly, which would essentially catch all of the dust, and you could have uh, had a removable filter feature where every year or so you could take the filter out and clean it. That would be a, a, a very good upgrade for this type of design. Otherwise, just using a larger heat sink and getting away from this heat pipe idea would make it a little more reliable. Uh, notice they have all three chips in series, so the heat pipe has to take the heat away uh, from the GPU and the uh, two processors. And uh, if that heat pipe is not doing its job, it is a real bad day, and uh, one of those chips is going to come unsoldered usually the hottest one, which would be the GPU. So we're going to make sure we blow all of the dust out of this unit. We're going to use Q-tips with a little bit of alcohol and clean and make sure we've got all of the dirt, dust, and FOD, F-O-D, foreign object, debris, um, little pieces of uh, dried out um, heat sink grease and pieces of uh, cables and glue and other types of plastic material that might be in here that could get into that fan. We want to remove all of that before we put this computer back together. You want to get into the fan with the Q-tip. Keep turning and cleaning until you get all of the dust off these fans. It might not look like it, but I removed a lot of FOD, uh, foreign object debris, from, uh, from this laptop. Um, there was uh, pet hair, there were fibers from carpets, there was dust and dirt, and uh, there was a layer of, uh, of oily dirt from the fans. And I got in there with some Q-tips and alcohol and uh, the aerosol duster, and I removed and uh, cleaned a lot of that stuff, cleaned everything out of the heat pipe, and uh, now we are ready to uh, begin reassembling uh, the MacBook Pro. Is the, uh, the Rojas compliance laws uh, of Europe that uh, mandated that lead not be used in uh, soldering. Um, during this time period, 2007-2008, uh, um, they were having a lot of problems with ball grid array type chips. Uh, getting them to flow properly and get good connectivity to the board. So a lot of this has to do with the use of non-leaded solders, which do not wet as well and are not as high in reliability unless the process is carefully controlled. So there was a learning curve, and that learning curve, unfortunately, got into the logic board. Um, if this board had been designed using the traditional leaded solders, um, probably uh, this issue would be much less pronounced. So summing it up, uh, the, uh, the reason that most of these units fail is not the design of the motherboard or the logic board particularly, but it is the design of the cooling system and how that cooling system becomes less effective as dirt and dust clog the heat pipe. Um, the enemy of any uh, computer or any electronics is heat. And the quickest way to get into trouble with heat, especially on surface mount boards, is to not is to allow dust to get in, which acts as an insulator, increases the heat, and eventually the chip will become so hot that the solder balls that are on the bottom of these chips that provide all the connections will become molten, and eventually one of them will give up especially when the computer is jarred or dropped or left in the case on where it overheats. It's very easy for those chips to become loose and to lose their connectivity. So I did actually use uh, Arctic Silver. This is uh, Arctic Silver 5 on the uh, tops of the, uh, the three chips. Uh, going to the heat pipe, uh, it's a little bit dangerous using this stuff because it is, it is conductive. So you have to be really careful not to splash it onto the chip where you might short out components that are actually on the top of the, uh, on the, top of the chip.